Welcome to the first Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup. The best young talents from six European nations are competing in four exciting disciplines. Athletes from Sweden, Switzerland, France, Italy, Austria, and Germany are all taking part. Who will keep their nerve and end up on top? We'll find out soon. The corona pandemic of 2020 has severely restricted the competition operations of timber sports. Instead of a large arena, the competition will take place in a television studio. In two days, the stage for the Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup will be set up at the Bavaria Film Studio near Munich in Germany. Three lorries will bring the stage and the competition wood from the Netherlands to the studios in Munich. Unfortunately, the athletes will have to do without the fans, their families, or cheering spectators this year. A strict hygiene concept was developed to ensure the competition could take place. However, this does not diminish the athletes' anticipation. Oliver Reinhardt from Switzerland is eagerly awaiting the competition. I have great expectations. I freue mich auf einen neuen Wettkampf. It's schön, auf europäischer Ebene einen Wettkampf machen zu können, auch in dieser schweren Zeit. It's natürlich schwer ohne Zuschauer. Das vermisse ich. Aber die können ja im Livestream auch noch zuschauen. In the Six Nations Rookie Cup, the athletes compete in a total of four disciplines. In each of these, they can score up to 12 points. The fastest athlete will receive 12 points, the second fastest 11, and so on until the last athlete, who will receive just one single point. After the stock saw, standing block chop, single buck, and underhand chop, the points will be added up. The athlete who has the most points at the end will be named the winner of the Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup. And we start today off with the Stock Saw. Stock Saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The Steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator's skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc, and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. All right, here we have the guys for heat number one. Lukas Vagesreiter from Austria going up against Mikkel Perrin from Italy. Warm up, your saw. So here's the opportunity, the guys, to start their saws, make sure they're getting running. You'll notice those pads on the floor. That's to keep the saws from walking around on the floor before the competition starts. And if you're familiar with Steel Timber Sports, you know that both hands need to be on the wood before the competition start. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Great start by Lucas Vagasreiter as he steps right in on top of that log and he starts to put some pressure on. Great return on the upstroke and it looks like he is going to be quick through there with a time of 12.52. That's a personal best for the young man from Austria. Check out the start here from Michael Perrin. Bit of an odd angle going down, but he had a really good catch up on the upstroke and manages to also get a personal best and wins this heat with a time of 12.15. All right, next heat coming up with Edvin Carlsen from Sweden going up against Oliver Reinhardt from Switzerland. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, really slow start from Oliver Reinhardt. Surprised that he took so long to get that saw up. Meanwhile, Carlson really quick on that first stroke on the upswing. No movement at all, and he gets through quickly. Reinhardt with a time of 13.08. Carlson with a time of 12.42. A personal best for Carlson, but there is a flag on the play. 
So our judge is having a look at his discs to make sure that everything is in order and he's calling for a video review. So this is a really important aspect of the Timber Sports is the video review and you can see there he has a finger that's just not over the line and unfortunately that little tiny faux pas cost him and he has a disqualification which means that after the DQ of Edwin Carlson Perrin is in first place with a personal best. He's closely followed by Vagas Reiter in second place also with a personal best and we move on to our next heat Niels Rolli up against Robin Haas. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, quick start by both of these guys. Two different styles. You can see Niels Rulli on the left-hand side of your screen really on top of his block, while Robin Haas has a little bit of a more deep knee bend in the situation. But Niels Rulli with a time of 12.23 to Robin Haas's 12.67. A close battle, but a personal best for Niels Rulli, and he wins this heat. There's a look at Robin Haas. You can see he's a little bit more behind the saw, depending on the pressure of his hands a bit more. But it was Niels Rulli who was the faster man in this heat. And you can see he just loses the tip of that blade behind the log a little bit, but gets through in a pretty good time. So takes over the lead with Robin Haas slipping into fourth place, pushing a few other guys around on the leaderboard and three personal bests in the competition already. That's good news for these rookies. Next heat, we got a German, Marcel Steinkemper, up against a Frenchman, Sebastian Bateau. That is ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Now the German's really known for having good Sawyers when it comes to the stock saw. And you can see already, oh my goodness, we got a bit of a problem on this one. That is the, the, the disc of Sebastian Bato. He had to restart that and it looks like he's got an incomplete cookie there. That's gonna cost him. Meanwhile, Steinkemper with a 14.04, pretty good time for him. So it's going to be about whether or not the judges see a complete cookie there and they do not. So that will mean a DQ for Bato. Unfortunate. Let's take a look at this again. And you can see here, he loses the tip of the saw blade into the log a little bit there, into that block. And that's where the problem ensues. He cuts away a big portion of that cookie He's got a thin one and he knew it right away. You could see him shaking his head. And that was an unfortunate situation for him. Meanwhile, Marcel Steinkamper, he went thick on that first cut and then he had to restart on the second cut, which is why his time was a little bit slower, but nevertheless recognized he had a problem and had two complete cookies at the end. Good job. Next heat coming up from Austria, Peter Rich going up against the Frenchman, Maxime Laiarige. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Really important quick check by Peter Rich there on his fingers to make sure he was all hands on deck there, which is very important. Maxime Laiarige with a great first cut. It looks like Peter Rich is playing catch up here, but Laiarige is gonna get it with a time of 11.50 with Peter Rich coming in at 13.11. I thought for sure Rich was gonna get there quicker, but Laiarige had the faster upstroke both of them started very well though, but Laia Rige was just a little bit faster on that first upswing there, and he looked great coming through that final upstroke. Really not adding too much pressure to that saw. Fantastic result for him. Next up, Loic Vincent from France going up against Emil Hansson from Sweden. Athletes. Ready? Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Even start by both of these gentlemen. Hanson looking like he's pretty fast. He drops the cookie first. Voinson on the upstroke. Here we see Hanson. Oh, he's struggling to get that through. And Voinson came in at 15.16. Hanson at 14.09. He was putting a little bit too much pressure on that 
saw, and I believe that probably slowed the blade down, which means that his speed was a little bit slower, and now there's a lot of checking going on for the disc. Oh my goodness, look at that. By the hair of his chinny chin chin, he has got an incomplete cookie, and that is going to mean a disqualification for Emil Hansson from Sweden. A massive disappointment for the young Swede. Let's take a look at this again. That first cut was a pretty thick cookie, no sweat there. And he was really applying a lot of pressure on that upstroke. He had a really nice no swing transfer from the down to the up, but right here, yeah, that blade stopped moving. And then of course the problem with the incomplete cookie, not a good day for Emil Hansen in Stocksaw. So Laia Rige with a great time of 11.40 takes over the top spot in Stocksaw with 12 points. Rulli and Perrin in second and third place respectively with 11.97 and 12.05. And Lukas Wagesreiter and Robin Haas rounding out the top five. And we can see down at the bottom of the leaderboard the two Swedes and a Frenchman all DQ'd in the first discipline and our event favorite, Emil Hansson, having a really disappointing start with zero points. So stocks are the first discipline for the rookies in the Six Nations Cup is over. We'll continue now with the standing block chop. Standing Block Chop At the Standing Block Chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around 3 kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Heat number one here in standing block has Niels Rolli from Switzerland going up against Mikael Parin from Italy. Here's where endurance and targeting play a huge role. You've got to be real accurate with that axe. Let's see how these two axemen do with the standing block chop. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Niels Rolli in red on the left, Mikael Parin from Italy in blue on the right, and you can see here Niels Rolli not a ton of power in his hits, but he's slabbing quite nicely on that block, and his accuracy with the hits is very good. Oh, big catch there by Michael Perrin. That costs energy and time, having to yank that axe back out of the block. He has a lot of power behind his hits as he's really twisting those hips in there, but each time he gets that axe stuck, it costs him time. Meanwhile, Niels Rolli is already working on the backside of his block, and it's going to be one more hit there for Niels Rolli and a 34.95 time, a personal best for him. Mikael Perrin has finally moved over to the other side, but struggling now as he has put so much energy into the first side, he's got zero power left on the backside, and it's really causing him to bounce that axe a little bit more than he would like, gets it stuck, and then one final blow. Time of 54.45 for Michael Perrin, and he checks a knot that seems to be giving him problems in that block. Couple of short, choppy hits here by Niels Rulli, but very accurate as he slabbed out nicely. And there's that one example, the ax just getting caught so deep two times in a row, and Michael Perrin just killing some energy and some time trying to dig it back out. And there is the winning blow from Niels Rulli. 
All right, next up, Edvin Carlson going to try and redeem himself from the DQ in the stock saw with Maxime Layarige from France. Ready. Let's see how these two guys do. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. The French known for very good standing block choppers here, but the Swedes, no slouches at all in this discipline. And you can see Edvin Carlson getting some really nice accurate hits there, slabbing pretty nicely, although a couple of those ones getting a little bit in the middle. Layarige moves to the other side of his block and starts going at it, really pushing off that back leg, twisting those hips to get the power in, but there he's suffering the same problem that Mikael Perrin did with getting a lot of power on his strokes and getting that ax stuck. So he's gonna really need to battle his way through here. Oh, and it's a great final hit by Layarige with a 37.95 and not far behind Carlson with a 38.47. And that is a personal best for Carlson, by the way. So a nice heat right there. Carlson, nice accurate hits right here going high and wide. Then he starts to move towards the middle of that cut. And meanwhile, Laia Rich, there's one of those big sticks with that power that he puts into it. But he had so much power that it just worked to his advantage, even with that ax getting caught a couple of times. Look at that, like a hot knife through butter for that final hit. And we move on to our next heat with Robin Haas from Switzerland, going up against Sebastian Pateau from France. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Immediately getting stuck is Robin Haas on his first and his second hits down low. That's gonna cause problems for him. Sebastian Bateau working hard on the first side. These guys going for the big, heavy power hits. Robin Haas now moves over to the other side of his block as he works on the back side. Sebastian Bateau hasn't gotten there yet. He should move over fairly quickly though as Robin Haas definitely has the lead here in this particular standing block chop. Now, Sebastian Bato finally moves over to the other side. A little slip by his foot as he moves over and the angle of that ax is quite heavy as Robin Haas drops it with a personal best of 33.62. And Sebastian Bato, he needs to go back to the drawing board with the accuracy and the angle that ax is hitting with because you could see a couple of times during that heat that ax did skip off the block and you could see he is spent and he knows that wasn't his best action there with a 49.47. Let's take a look at back really quickly here. And right here, you should see that ax. Yep, there you go. The angle was just too much and it skipped up and away. Good that he had a solid hold on it. And here, the final hit from Robin Haas. Wow, look at that. Just bashes that block off the top. Good job. And there you have your winner in that heat. So taking a look at the standings in Standing Block Shop and Robin Haas with a personal best of 33, 36 is just ahead of Niels Rolli with a 33-83, excuse me. So those two guys are uh, in the top of standing block chop. Niels Rolli, however, takes over the overall standings and Robin Haas is sitting in third place just behind Maxime Layarige from France. In the next heat, Marcel Steinkemper will face off with Lukas Wagestreiter. The German Steinkemper was already in action at the Amarok Intermediate Cup in Melrichstadt this year and had every reason to cheer. After four disciplines, the native of Minden came second in his first competition ever. War echt super der Wettkampf. Also als erstes Mal ein bisschen aufgeregt, aber war super. Ich habe mich gut gefühlt. Während der ersten so der zweiten Disziplin hatte ich auch ein bisschen mehr Sicherheit drin. Ist ja mal ist ja ein bisschen aufgeregt, aber bin zufrieden. In the single buck, Steinkemper was the fastest. For the Six Nations Rookie Cup, the German wants to mentally prepare himself once again. Also, ich will auf jeden Fall ein bisschen besser mit der Nervosität klarkommen, aber ich denke mal, das kommt von Wettkampf zu Wettkampf wieder immer besser und dann durch die Zeiten verbessern und dann mal sehen, wo der Weg noch hinführt. He's now in Munich to compete in the Six Nations Rookie Cup. The second discipline for him, the standing block chop. So Lukas Wagestreiter and Marcel Steinkemper going up against each other. The German and the Austrian battling against each other on stage now. 
Wagestreiter on the left in red, Steinkemper on the right in black, and there we see Wagestreiter getting a really nice attack on that block on the first side, although he did get his axe a little bit stuck in there. Steinkemper, oh, a huge stick for him as well, but he's pretty deep on that block already, should move over to the other side, and he does. Steinkemper hoping for good results here in this first ever Steel Timber Sports Rookie Six Nations Cup. And both of these guys pretty evenly matched up here. Lukas Wagesreiter has a little bit of a waggle there. Looks like one more hit should do it, and he drops the block in 35-47, and Steinkemper in 36-91. So not the result Steinkemper wanted against the Austrian, but nevertheless, a solid score in his first major competition. You can see the power that he is putting into those hits there. Deep push on the hip twist there as well. And you can see that axe goes deep into the block. You have to try and find that balance between power and accuracy to make sure that it comes out as quickly as possible. And a little bit of anticipation there from Lukas Wagesreiter, but that will come with experience. All right, moving on. Next heat, we've got Peter Rich from Austria going up against Louis Vincent from France, and they are already into the first side. Voinson got a bit of a stick there at the first couple of hits there, and wow, look at how quickly Peter Rich is moving that axe. Reminds me a bit of the Australians, how quick they're going at it. And Voisson doing the same thing with the speed these guys are hitting at at the moment. We should see some good times here, hopefully. Oh my goodness, look at that, Voisson with a 26-3, and you can hear the one person in the background in the audience there going, oh, ho oh, oh. ho. It was a great time. Peter Rich, meanwhile, struggling to get through it and finally does in 33-6-9. So he is third in standing block, but Voinson, what a fantastic heat by him. There you see Peter Rich. There's a big stick by him right early on. And as I was saying, it's just about trying to find that balance between accuracy and power. But both of these guys started out quickly, very fast with the ax head. And it was Loic Voinson with a great time of 20.63, winning this heat with a bullet. All right, there's a lot of anticipation coming up for the next heat because of that man right there, Emil Hansson, who will try to redeem himself after a DQ in the stock saw. Will he be able to do it? The time to beat is 20.63 and he needs to be among the top guys here if he wants to get back in this competition and maintain his status as a favorite. All right, final heat in standing block chop between Oliver Reinhardt from Switzerland and Emil Hansson from Sweden. And like I said, this has got to be the discipline to get Emil Hansson back in the mix here if he wants to stay in this competition. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Emil Hansen, as I said, is a favorite in this competition. This is also a discipline he is very strong at, but Oliver Reinhardt looking absolutely fantastic as he digs deep on the first side and now moves over to the other side. Emil Hansen is also on the other side. He's looking good. Huge blows from the slight Swede, and he's got it off the top at 1950. What a fantastic time for Emil Hansen. Oh my goodness, and Oliver Reinhardt with a 21.56, not that far behind, but that was definitely the discipline for Emil Hansen to come back. Here you see Reinhardt looking very, very good on the first side of his block. He moves over to the other side quickly. Emil Hansen, oh, that ax got stuck in there so heavily twice as he moves over to the other side. That could have been even faster had that ax not got so stuck, but look how accurate he is with those hits and the power that he puts in there as well. This last one should be the redeemer, and it was. And the adjusted time was 19.36, so that is the fastest time of the day in standing block chop. That means Hansen is back in it with 12 points. Voinson with his 20.60 sits in second in standing block, and Reinhardt with a great time of 21.30 is third in standing block, and that means in the overall standings, Hansen is sitting in eighth place, but he is back in the mix. Rulli still on top with 18 points, with Robin Haas right behind him and Reinhardt in third. It's an all-Swiss top three at the moment.
Austria's Peter Rich sits in fourth place, and there's two Frenchmen in fifth and sixth, Maxime Layarige and Loïc Voisson, respectively holding down those spots. And Hansen is sitting down there in eighth, as I mentioned. So the points, not that much difference between each of the top guys. It's anybody's game. With two more disciplines still to be competed, the overall standings are not fixed. There are plenty of points still to be earned. Next up, single buck. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Heat number one in single buck, Edvin Carlsson from Sweden going up against Italy's Michael Perrin. Last minute checks to make sure that everything is set and fair. Michael with a couple of test strokes to make sure that he is good to go. And here we go. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Rhythm and flow, that's what it's all about here and not getting that stock caught. Oh, and look at this, Carlson gets it stuck right off the hop and that takes so much energy to get the thing going again. Meanwhile, Michael Perrin looking great. Oh, but a huge catch for him as well, but finally gets through in a time of 14.98. That's a personal best for the Italian and a personal best also for the Swede at 19.61. Moving those two meter long cross cut saws is not easy and you can see the difficulties for Edvin Carlson right off the start to get into the flow. Meanwhile, on the other side of the stage, Michael Perrin did a great job just to keep that saw moving and make sure that he got to the bottom of that cut as quickly as possible. One stick right there, but the restart was okay and he got the time. Next heat, Niels Rulli, who is at the top of the overall rankings at the moment, going up against Sebastian Bateau. Bateau struggling on that standing block chop earlier. Now has an option here, or a chance rather, to play a little bit of catch up on this single buck. Let's see if he can do it. A really quick start by Niels Rulli though, but he's got some good flow though, and oh, Bato angling that saw to try and find the best way to get through it, but he got it stuck a couple of times, and Niels Rulli really using the entire length of that saw to cut clean and quickly. Meanwhile, Sebastian Bato not using the entire saw, but he's got quick choppy movements, and Niels Rulli with a time of 19.93, a personal best for him. Sebastian Bato finally drops it at 26.06 with a couple of catches. Oh, but we have a yellow flag on the play on the side of Niels Rulli. So let's take a look at this again. The highlight on the left-hand side. Oh yes, he started much too quickly. So that was a false start for Niels Rulli. That means a DQ. So even with a time of 26.06, we've got a winner on that heat, Sebastian Bato, and he is sitting in third place with Nias Willis, DQ and zero points, currently in fourth, but plenty of action still to come. Next up, Oliver Reinhard from Switzerland going up against his countrymate, Robin Haas. Oliver Reinhardt opting to set himself up, looking down the gun, so to say, of Robin Haas as the two face off with each other. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A quick start by Robin Haas, 
but very fast movement, like really choppy sawing action from Oliver Reinhardt there. Robin Haas using the entire length of the blade. Reinhardt using maybe about three quarters of it in the middle part, but he gets through in 13 seconds. Fast time. Robin Haas at a 14.43, also a good time. So take a look at the different styles here. Reinhardt right in front of you on the left-hand side of your screen. Short, choppy cuts. Meanwhile, Robin Haas on the far side using the entire length of the blade. Different styles, or as they say, different strokes for different folks. And in this case, it worked out for Reinhardt to the benefit of a good time. 13 seconds and a personal best. And Robin Haas also a personal best at 14.43. Good job by both of these guys. So in single buck, Reinhardt and Haas both move into the top spot with the fast times of the day. Time to beat a 13-2-3. Perrin and Carlson sitting in third and fourth, but again, plenty of action still to come with three more heats to go. In the overall standings, Niels Rulli moves down to fourth place by virtue of his DQ in single buck, and that leaves Reinhardt and Haas as the remaining two Swiss men at the top of the rankings with Michael Perrin right behind them in third place. All right, moving on to our next heat, we've got Lukas Wagesreiter going up against Peter Rich. So two Austrians in the heat against each other. And you can see right there, Lukas Wagesreiter setting his saw in upside down to try and get a few test strokes. This is an often used way of just making sure that your fluid and flow is the way it feels good and should be. All right, here we go. Timber. Three. Two, one, go! So Lucas Wagesreiter on the left, Peter Rich on the right, and you can see again, two different styles. Wagesreiter going for those long strokes, but he gets a little bit caught up there, has to restart. Oh, twice now, Peter Rich had the same problem, but he's going for those shorter, choppier strokes, and it looks like he might have, oh no, excuse me, Wagesreiter gets through in 16.59, but look how close Peter Rich was at 16.82. Oh, that was very close. You can see the different styles. There you see Peter Rich, a little bit choppier. Wagesreiter here using the entire length of the saw. Right there, the saw gets caught up though. The angle was just too steep to get it going on that forward stroke, but then he got back into the flow. And uh, man, it was a real close heat between these two. 1659 to 1682. And that is not a lot of difference for these two Austrians. Very good job. All right, next heat up, Marcel Steinkamper from Germany going up against Maxime Lairige from France. Couple of big boys, and I'm curious to know if we're gonna see, again, two different styles of cutting or if it's going to be similar styles between the Frenchman and the German. Let's see. Three, two, one, go! Fast start by Steinkemper as he gets in there quickly. Lajarij, oh, Steinkemper gets caught up big time as Lajarij continues to work through that block very nicely. He is also using a lot of that saw, not digging out through very quickly. Oh, a big break by Steinkemper as the bottom half of that cookie remains attached to the block. He has to go restart and that kills a lot of his time. But as long as he gets that cookie complete, it will count even though it's broken. There you see Laia Rige using the entire length of the saw to cut through that block. He had a nice clean cut from top to bottom. Got to be real careful that you don't angle that saw too much or twist it. And you can see here it's Steinkempa battling hard at the bottom of the cut where that gets to be a very, very critical phase. And it was a break right here as he twisted the saw a little bit too much and you can see the cookie break away, right? Watch here, yep. It just gets stuck, the cookie breaks off. And the distress right there, as he knows, he's gotta reset that saw and cut that last little piece of that destructive little cookie off. And destructive, I mean time destructive. But he did get it off, so it counts, and we move on to our next heat between Loic Voinson and Emil Hansen. 
If you saw our first show, Emil Hansen had a disastrous stock saw, a DQ in fact, but did have a fantastic comeback in the standing block chop. Now he has an opportunity in one of the disciplines where he is very strong. Single buck is definitely a discipline he excels at. Three, two, one, go! Very, very nice start by Emil Hansen. Loic Voisson also got a good start, but got a little bit hooked up there. And this is just a matter of time behind that saw to know when it works well. <laughs> Holy smokes, did you see that? I barely saw it, but Emil Hansen threw in 12.47. Fastest time of the day for the young Swede as he rocked through that disc. Oh my goodness, how quick was that? Loic Voisson not far behind, but still not near as fast as Emil Hansen. And there is the view from Loic. And Emil Hansen just putting everything he's got into this discipline that he is so solid at. Look at his stance and the use of that saw. Just complete body and saw in unison. Fantastic. So Emil Hansen destroys this one with a 12-2-5. That's going to be hard to beat. So overall standings now, and Hansen is climbing back up the leaderboard from 8th place to 4th. So he is definitely in the mix. Reinhard and Haas maintaining the top two spots for Switzerland. And Maxime Lajarige has moved into third place in the overall standing. So it's getting interesting now as there are still points to be had with one more discipline to go. Realistically speaking, the top seven guys have an opportunity to win it all here today. However, anything can happen as we have seen. Who will win the underhand chop and secure the victory at the Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup? Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. Okay, here we go. Underhand chop, our final discipline. Michael Perrin against Niels Uli. Three. Two, one, go! All right, again, as you heard in the description, they have to be cut through from both sides. Here, it's about power and accuracy again, just like in the standing block chop this time. On top of the log, you have to think about also getting around to the other side, maintaining your balance and staying on top of the log. Can't cut through that thing when you've stepped off. So it's a lot going on here. And let's see who's gonna take this one. Perrin, looking good on the far side, Nils Rulli has finally come over to the backside of his log and is cutting through. And it looks like Nils Rulli is going to get through there. Oh my goodness, Perrin gets it actually at 37.29. That's a personal best for him. And Nils Rulli is still trying to dig through that backside. There we go. Gets through it and 49.15, also a personal best for the Swiss man. And you can see here, a lot going on, going through your head at the same time, trying to slab out some big chunks there, but also trying to make sure you stay within the lines. And there you see Michael Perrin's final cut as he splits the block. And now we move on to our next heat with Edwin Carlson and Marcel Steinkemper. Three, two, one, go! Carlson on the left-hand side in the blue and yellow. Steinkemper on the right in the black. And there we're on board now with Edwin Carlson. Guys both pacing each other pretty well as Steinkemper now moves over to the front side of his block. Carlson still working to go a bit deeper on the back side of his. Couple of big axe sticks for Carlson, causing the time to slow down. Steinkemper, meanwhile, has got a huge advantage as he's almost all the way through, and he gets it in 32-8-2. A personal best for the German, and he is very satisfied with that. 
with a fist pump and a scream. Carlson still trying to get through on the front side of his block here. A couple of small axe skips and a stick, and that's going to cause problems for his time. And it looks like it's finally starting to loosen up, and he gets it done in 52-24. Huge axe hookup right there as he gets over to the other side. And that is a tough situation, too, because he gets the axe caught a couple of times, and he's got to maintain that balance as he continues to swing and gain position. And you can see the final blow there from Steinkamper as he steps off safely and is very satisfied with that time. For the first international wettkampf bin ich eigentlich zufrieden. Gerade letzte Disziplin war noch mal richtig gut. Habe ich noch mal ein bisschen einen rausgehauen. Ersten Disziplin waren nicht so gut, aber es geht weiter und ich freue mich auf den nächsten Wettkampf. Vielleicht dann vor Publikum. Jetzt haben wir ja hier im Fernsehstudio, aber auch eine schöne Atmosphäre. Die Bühne sieht toll aus. Die Leute sind alle super nett. Und ich freue mich auf den nächsten Wettkampf. All right, next heat in the underhand chop is two Frenchmen going up against each other. Sebastian Bateau against Maxime Layarige. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, they start off well, synced up nicely as the two of them are hitting almost at the same frequency to each other. Now it looks like Sebastian Bateau is picking up the pace a little bit Maxime Layarige on the far side there has got his axe caught into that block a couple of times. And as I've been saying all show long, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time to pull that axe back out once it's stuck deep in the wood. Looking at Layarige here as he's moved over to the front side of his block as he's trying to dig through here. And the guys have both passed the 35 second mark. Both of them struggling quite a bit here as they try and get through the block. They must be exhausted from the earlier single buck competition. Takes a lot out of you and you need endurance and power and strength and everything. And finally, Sebastian Bateau gets through in 52-17 and Maxime Layarige in 55-08. You can see a couple of big sticks from Layarige on the far side there. Another view from Bateau. So the two slowest times so far for the two Frenchmen as we take a look at the underhand chop results with three more heats to go. But in the overall results, look at the change here. Layarige moves up into the top of the ranking while Bateau drops down to the bottom. And talking about nationalities, look at this, the Swiss team all three of them right together in two, three, and four. And Michael Perrin sitting in fifth place. Marcel Steinkamper in sixth. And Emil Hanson in seventh at the moment as we move to our next heat with Lukas Wagestreiter and Robin Haas. Three, two, one, go! Opportunity now for Robin Haas from Switzerland to move up to the top of the ranking as he was sitting in fourth place there but had not competed in a heat in the underhand chop. So this is a chance for him to gain some points here. Lukas Wagesreiter also hitting well, but uh, getting a couple of sticks there as the ax gets caught there. And, and as I've been saying all along, it takes a lot of energy and time. But Lukas Wagesreiter was actually the first to move over to the other side and start digging on the front side. But Robin Haas is doing a great job to try and catch up with the Austrian as he seems to be picking up the pace in his strokes actually. So it could be that Robin Haas has an advantage here, even though Lukas Wagesreiter moved to the other side first. And it's getting close. Ooh, that block is moving a bit for Robin Haas. And he drops it at 43.86. Lukas Wagesreiter just a little bit later at 46.22. Look at those hits, though. Beautiful. Nice big slab coming out right there. It was a great heat from Robin Haas, though. Wagesreiter actually moved over to the other side of his block before Haas did, but Haas, it seemed like he was getting faster as the heat went on and getting a little bit more accurate, and he had a great time of 43.86. Moving on to our next heat, Peter Rich from Austria going up against Louis Vincent from France. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
All right, good start by both of these guys. Peter Rich, a little bit of a stick there. Louis Croissant, so far, so good, with no problems keeping that ax moving. Couple of pretty evenly matched guys as we see Voinson move over to the other side of his block already, and he's starting to pick up the pace. Interesting that we're seeing the guys go slow in the first few hits, but then pick up the pace as they move to the other side of the block, and that says a lot about training and technique as well. Oh, great time by Loic Voinson, 27-73. Peter Rich still trying to dig through the front side of his block as he passes the 36 second mark now, and finally gets through at 37-83. Great time by Loic Voinson as we take a look here. Both of the guys pretty good on the backside. In fact, Loic Voinson had a real big stick there. But it was interesting to watch how much faster his axe started moving once he got onto the front side of that block. And that made all the difference here with a great time for the Frenchman of 27.73. So that is the time to beat for the moment. The Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup. So far, we've seen an exciting competition from Europe's promising young elite. Who will win it all and take home the title? These last two have a really good chance in any case. Final heat coming up. And here we go, last heat of the day. Oliver Reinhardt going up against Emil Hansson. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Nice even start by both of them. Oliver Reinhardt slabbing out some big chunks there. Emil Hansson doing the same. Oh, big stick by Emil Hansson, but he opts to pull that ax out and move to the other side. And he's got a good pace going on the front side now facing our cameras. Huge stick by Oliver Reinhardt though. Emil Hansen's got the block loose. He gets it done in 20, 23. Underhand chop, that's the fastest time so far. Oliver Reinhardt, he is just passing the 28 second mark at 28, 51. Finally breaks the block. Great job by both of these guys. All right, here the ax sticks really heavily for Emil Hansen, but he pulls it out and opts to switch to the other side. And you can see in this head-to-head -head view, more or less, that Emil Hansen on the far side, there's that stick again. Oh, and a step down by Oliver Reinhardt caused a bit of a problem as far as his timing was concerned. And here, the final blow from Emil Hansen with a personal best and the fastest time of the day. So, the underhand chop, Emil Hansen wins it with a bullet, seven seconds ahead of Loic Voinson. Oliver Reinhardt, good time for him, sits in third place in the underhand chop. Stein, Kemper, and Perrin rounding out the top five. Let's take a look at how this affects the overall standings. And there has been some shifting. Loic Voinson sitting in third. Emil Hansen with a bad start comes back to second place in the overall. And a great time in the underhand gives Oliver Reinhardt the top of the podium. So we continue with the award ceremony in third place from France, Loic Voinson. In second place with a great comeback from Sweden, Emil Hansson. Det är bra att internationella tävlingar börjar igen. Så vi får börja tävla igen och komma in i tävlingsrytmen lite. And the Steel Timber Sports Six Nations Rookie Cup winner for 2020 is Oliver Reinhardt from Switzerland. Det hat sich alles geklappt. Das war alles gut, alles solid. Var sicher nicht meine beste Leistung. Ich sehe da immer noch Luft nach oben, aber ich glaube Man can zufrieden sein mit sich selbst. We bid you farewell from Munich and from Studio 6 at the Bavaria Filmstadt. This was the first ever Six Nations Rookie Cup by Steel Timber Sports. It was a great competition and we're definitely curious to see which of these 12 young talents will soon be competing with the pros. Thanks for watching everyone, stay healthy and see you soon.